All right, hey, Vinyl Community, Jeff here again. Time to show a few recent vinyl pickups on this time around um, from a local store. Um, and, a, and, and, and yeah, so, yeah, just some, some local stuff here that we've picked up. Um, so, yeah, I, we went out the other night, and we were um, in the general area where one of the stores is that I go to. And I'm like, well, let's stop by there. It was actually on a weeknight, which is really weird. We had to go do some shopping real quick. And I'm like, um, they close in less than 30 minutes, but I can get in there and take a look. So uh, I went in there and took a look and I grabbed a couple things real quick. So, um, yeah, they had some new stuff that I hadn't seen. One I've never heard of, and I'll tell you why I bought this. If you're not familiar with this, like I wasn't shaft of life by air race, never heard of it. Um, looked cool. It was listed in their hair metal section and I'm like, okay, cool. Um, 1984 release. And I flipped it over and, you know, they look like a bunch of long-haired kids. And then I noticed the drummer was Jason Bonham. I'm like, okay. I didn't know Jason Bonham did this band in 84. I, I guess I became most familiar with him when he did, like, what was that early band he did? Was it just Bonham or Bonfire or some band? He's, he did some bands back in the 80s I remember hearing about, but had never heard of this band. So I bought it based solely on the fact that he was in it and you know they look like they are you know a rocking band now they are going to be more it ends up being a little more commercial classified a little more of as an aor rock hard rock type thing um so what probably became more popular with the the bon jovis and the def leopards of later years they were just a little more on that side with you know the keyboards and stuff um, the band did this album and basically were done for that and then they came back in if i recall correctly like 2011, Jason wasn't with them on drums, and they did another album, and then like in, uh, I remember looking it up, later on, like 2018, a third album, again, Jason was none of them, so they did come back and do a couple later albums, but this was the only one in 84, it's on Atco, so uh, anyway, I, yeah, I never heard of it back in the day, so I went ahead and grabbed it, and it's, you know, it's, kinda, it's cool, it's a cool, decent sound, early Jason Bonham there. Uh, and then this one I grabbed uh, just, you know, again, I'm always on the lookout for their stuff. Monument by Hallow's Eve. Uh, it is a cutout. It's an OG press from back in the 80s. What is this? 1988. That is a small. I uh, need my glasses. Anyway. And, um, and, and these were like in like pristine condition. These were unplayed looking. And so I was like, yeah, I'm going to get that. Um, this is a metal blade back in the day. So, you know, you've seen this album thrash masters that really only did like this is their third album i really want their first album because that's the one i had back tales of terror that's the one i had back in the 80s um and so that's the one i'm always looking for this is their third album and then they had like a fourth and a fifth album that were later in the years and those have been put out on vinyl but one of them was on night of the vinyl dead and it's probably impossible to find now because it was a handful of years ago and then their last album was on some smaller label in Greece, another hard one. I don't think it was No Remorse. It was some other label, um, drawing a blank, but uh, probably impossible to find nowadays for a decent price, but I'll probably be looking out. But the first three albums uh, are the, the three, in my opinion, you know, the early 80s stuff, the 80s stuff, the earlier stuff in the 80s is the stuff I really want. So there we go, grab that. Doc Holiday Modern Mission. Uh, this is Doc Holliday, if you're not familiar with them, are a, uh, another one of those southern rock bands of the early 80s um, that were riding on, you know, coming into the picture, uh, like Blackfoot and Skinner, of course, back in the 70s and coming into the picture into the 80s. Uh, 38 Special, another, another one you could throw into. So these guys are running on the tail end of that. And this is their 1983 album. Not too terribly long ago, well, months, months ago, I showed where I picked up their second album. And uh, I have yet to find a good copy of their first album. Really, to me, the first two albums are, in my opinion, some of the best. They were, they were re reminiscent of early 38 Special, early Blackfoot, like I mentioned. This album, they really went pop commercial. So... If you listen to early 38 special, all the way up to like Wild Eyed Southern Boys and stuff, and then you look at them when they entered into the later years where they became, you know, a little more 
uh, on pop radio oriented. That's about how this sounds. It loses a little bit of that feel of the classic southern rock type feel, and it goes into more of a commercial thing. And they really, uh, I believe, they, they've done a lot of albums all over the years with little breaks in between. They did a couple stragglers in the 2000s and I think a straggler or two in the 90s. And then back in the early 2010s, like mm, 2011, all the way through like 2018, they had like about four or five CD releases. I have never heard any of the latter stuff. I don't know what style they went with or, you know, how they've changed. Um, but they have continued on for quite a while. This is on the A&M label. And so I'm happy to have this because I do, back when I first got into them, which was after this album, I did pick up the reissues of the first three, including this one, first three albums on CD. They had just reissued, remastered them back in the 90s, I believe it was. And so I am familiar with this album. So I want to, the first three are the ones I've had the longest in my collection. So I definitely want to find that first album. And then any ones after that, I'm not even sure how many more after that might have been on vinyl, but was happy to find that again, pristine condition. And this was cool. Um, Deep Purple in Concert. It's been on my wish list for a while. Uh, it's a 1980-81 release, but the concerts on here are from 70 and 72. It says in, this fall, in fine print they have been previously released. I'm not sure. I haven't tracked down exactly where the footage is. I have so many live shows by the band. I may have the footage already. I may have the the uh, this content already. But, you know, this is a... Uh, it was in great condition. It's still in the shrink wrap, though, open. And so I, you know, had to add it to my vinyl collection because I don't think I have these shows on vinyl if I do, but I've got so many CDs by them that I might have the footage already. I might already have this, you know, content in another form. But anyway, I thought it was worth getting. So in and out real quick, got some stuff and, uh, you know, was able to, to get out of there before they closed. And that's it for this one. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And I'll see you later. Rock on and rock hard.